besides thanking Alicia, I want to thank uh, the American Bird Conservancy for their uh, efforts, their campaign, to help us get the Neotropical Migratory Bird authorized. Uh, many people uh, have assisted with that effort, but uh, ABC has really carried the standard into battle here, and we really appreciate that. Okay, I'm going to do two things very briefly this morning. One is I'm going to run very quickly through a brief update of the act, what it's about. Most of you know already what it's about, uh, with a couple of quick project updates, on the ground project updates. And then I'm going to talk more about the reason we're here, which is threats, gaps, and examples, particularly with regard to this program, this grants program that actually implements conservation on the ground. Where are we going with it? Where should we go with it? We want to hear your comments as well. So um, very briefly on PowerPoint, this is, of course, a competitive grants program. It's hemispheric in nature. Um, you know, it takes a couple of things to do on the ground conservation. It takes trained, experienced uh, people like yourselves. It also takes some funding. And, uh, you know, our, our sort of universe of uh, coverage here is not all birds, obviously, but it, it's, we, we figure we covered 340 some species that occur in the U.S., and that's a big chunk of it right there. That's probably half of what we have in the U.S. Um, I get nervous when both, both of our previous speakers talked about the billions and billions necessary for conservation. We obviously don't have <clears throat> that kind of money. You'll see on the slide, but we do have uh, the 2009 um, uh, appropriation is not decided and probably will not be until at least January or, or February. And you know most of this stuff already. There's a heavy match requirement. Uh, most of our funding goes to uh, Latin America and the Caribbean. Uh, just some summary figures so you know what we've done. The program has been in existence for uh, about eight years now. We're in our eighth year. Notice the uh, four to one match we've been able to, uh, to get over the years. A good argument for us. Um, again, 341 species. This, is, this program targets the long distance migrants that breed or pass through the U.S. and uh, spend the non-breeding season in Latin America and the Caribbean and uh, provides us some direction uh, in our work. Just three quick examples of projects, and I'm sorry if I didn't include yours. We have so many good ones to, to choose from, let me, let me say that. Uh, this is one in Alaska. You, you heard uh, some talk about impacts in, uh, of climate change in Alaska. This project with the Wildlife Conservation Society, and just a couple of facts and figures so you know the, the scale that we're working on. Um, there is concern over uh, oil field development and how it might impact uh, nesting birds. And this is a, an attempt to look at, uh, at that very issue. Here's, uh, here's the project area. Don't you wish you were a field biologist again? I, it's hard for me to look at this. This is the Shekpuk Lake region in the National Petroleum Reserve. Here's a stilt sandpiper, which is one of the subjects of this of this research. Uh, field biologist from WCS in action. Uh, preliminary data suggest that, in fact, um, let me see if I can get this right now. Uh, undeveloped uh, nesting areas at like at Tshekbuk Lake uh, are showing a lower. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, increased nesting success versus sites that have that are involved with oil field development, uh, uh, pred increased uh, predation from things like gulls and, and Jaegers. And there are various theories for that. 
Okay, so again, this is not, this is not, uh, this Alaska project is not an advocacy uh, uh, project. It, it's getting the, which can then be used for things like, uh, are there ways to mitigate impacts from oil field development? Let's move to uh, Nicaragua, uh, an FFI project on an island in Lake Nicaragua called Ometepe, where uh, we're talking about a country which has not had a lot of funding or personnel available for, uh, for protected area management. In this case, uh, they provided some capacity building, instituted some basic monitoring, did some community outreach. Here are the first four park rangers at uh, Volcan Madeiras uh, uh, National Reserve. Some outreach to local schools in the, uh, the island region. And some mist netting, uh, getting some basic biological data uh, to support reserve management. A third example in Colombia, this is the Alliance for Critical Ecosystems working in the dry forests uh, uh, in the uh, northern, northeastern part of the country, the dry forests of the Caribbean region. Uh, you can see, you can read the objectives there. This is actually a, a slide from our, our new project on Saturn. Uh, <laughs> no, not really. Uh, this is uh, the uh, apiary project was a sub-element of our, our uh, project that uh, is uh, looking at sustainable uh, economic alternatives uh, in communities around the forest. A tree nursery that was developed in, in this uh, uh, indigenous community. And an eco-lodge, which uh, I would really like to spend a couple of nights in. Uh, ecotourism is one of the, the objectives of this, uh, of this project. Okay, let's uh, just like to talk briefly how we're doing here. We got, we're good on time. What, what I really want to talk to you about is where does this program go from here? Uh, we think we've had a, a relatively modest sized program that has had some success on the ground. Uh, what else can we do? You can't obviously talk about this very much without talking about money. This is a this is a grants program. Uh, what is what is the future look like for funding? Well, in terms of federal appropriations, it it's, should be fairly obvious that it, the future is not particularly bright. Uh, I mean, we thanks to the efforts of our our colleagues, uh, we, we know the message is getting to the appropriators that, you know, this is a good program, it's highly leveraged, et cetera, et cetera. We, we appreciate that. But 